Hey guys, this is Garis, and welcome back to my gaming channel. We're back here in Feed the Beast, and we're doing another mini episode. And this time we're doing machines, and we're doing thermal expansions machines. So um, I, I'm, I push to go straight to Indoor IO, but thermal expansion is quite an early game, or can be quite an early game uh, mechanic as well. Um, actually, it can be quicker than your normal ender io but i enjoy ender io more because you have more functionality in it i'll show you a bit later in this but why i say that so why i say it's um, quite early game most of the machines is quite easy to make copper you get already early on in the game um, gold is a bit tough but if you go a little bit mining you can get it no problem then iron and tin this is all is very easy to get and come by uh, and glass is not even a factor so that is your first um, steam dynamo if you look at your first machine it's also it's okay magma crucible wait no wait back to let's say a recent furnace it's bricks bricks you get from clay clay you get all around the map so this is, can be very early game but what i problem i have for this is with this and for this um, is you have to upgrade everything there's upgrade kits here so this is a basic once we're using then you get hardened so it increases the, the production and the requirements so maximum power is 20 usually hardened takes it to 30 and then you get reinforced 40 and 50 and 80 i believe or something but resonant is used with quite mid to almost late game materials so you can use thermal expansion up until late game it's not end game but very late game but the same with inner io you can get it a bit difficult in early game but from mid game to late game it's quite powerful and i'll show you one perk it has in a second so this is basic machines that we have and this is a basic power generation so this is easier to make than inner ios I'm using inner IO's wrench, but they have its own crescent hammer. So this is their wrench or crescent hammer as they call it. I use this for all machines. So this one is a leadstone flux duct. This is the power cabling for thermal foundation. So this is also easy or cheap to make. It's just lead and redstone and glass. So, and this can transport 100 RF per tick. If you right click or you shift over it, it says 100 RF per tick. Okay, so you can do that or you can put a battery in. So, this is also nice. Um, I like that it's one block. Okay, orange usually is input. So, this will be input. So, this face needs to be input. Front is this one. And blue. Or do I have it the wrong way around? Sorry, blue is input and right side is output. Oh, yeah, let me put take this away because it has a nice bar this side. So let's rather put it there. It's in flux duct. Oops, there we go. Okay, so that's a basic power of it. So this uses steam dynamo so it requires water and also it has its own fluid duct system so that's quite nice so now we put the tank on, on top of it i'm using a different uh, mechanics water um, come on Okay, so this is where my problem comes in. So now we put, I have to put a server on it to get the water out and you have to go into the server and you have to say always enabled and now it will put water in it. Whereas with Ender IO, you don't need an extra piece just to pull out water. Okay, well, it has water in it. Okay, just went to grab a few pieces of coal. So let's dump a quarter stack of coal in. So that we can produce start producing power so this will start receiving power i 
Okay, maybe it's transferring power to one of the machines. Oh, yeah, they, no, it's starting up here. Yeah. So I think this, the cables also has some RF in it. So it added charge up the leads and conduits as well. As you can see, this one has zero RF. I'm using the tool tip at the top. So these ones you will see has 28,000 RF. Okay, this one also. So basic flux stack is the same as any of the, the machines. The first capacitor can hold a 2 million RF. So that, what is nice is you can now upgrade this as well. With hardened and I think at the top tier, it can store like 50 million RF, but what bugs me is it's in one block. So it doesn't make sense pushing it that much. What I like about Ender IO, it's a multi block. The more you expand it, the higher it gets. So I have three cells and it expands with each, each cell or capacitor bank that you put in. So that kind of makes more sense. Okay, so to get to the mechanics of a polarized or something. So it has internal settings same as in your IO so you can say at the top pull in so blue is usually input as I mentioned here and orange is usually output so or after you pulverize it push out what is there or push out the secondary item sometimes um, refining stuff gives you a secondary output or just push out both of them okay so also this is the pulverizer this is the recent furnace so let's say we're going to get input from the left side. So the pulverizer is going to export on the right hand side. So it's going to pulverize something. And on the top, we want to export the secondary item. Okay, just went to get a test. So everything it outputs will automatically push in there. So auto output enabled, auto input disabled. Okay, so it doesn't input, so that's fine. So let's put a couple of this in there. So it will pulverize the coal. It will make coal that pulverize coal, which it can't do anything with it, with to the right side. Because the redstone furnace that can't handle it. At least it's smart enough to know this. So should have pushed it there but you can put up filters oh see we got some sulfur that would have been a secondary output and it automatically pushed to the chest so that's a good coincidence but let's say we put in black quartz ore so it will process it then it will send it automatically to this side okay it pulverizes that automatically into uh, let's get some ore uranium ore okay so let's put in uranium ore this should give you two dust and then it will make two uranium ingots and it will automatically go to the side, uranium grid, and it will make an ingot. So what you can do, now you can do an item duct. You can put it there. Okay. But once again, if this wasn't, if you couldn't put this, let's say this was a chest. Now you can say let, let it go in, so it will automatically go in. But let's say you want to put in uranium here, and the chest is over here. Now I want to put in something in here, or let's use the left side. Item duct. So now I want to put uranium, or let's say I want this into here. So this one will accept from the left side, but the chest isn't smart enough. So now we have to put in another servo. And we can tell it, listen here, enable. What's nice is you can whitelist or blacklist items, but it will send the item nonetheless, it pulverized. And what's nice about it is you can make a filter, put it on this side, and you can tell it, listen here, whitelist or blacklist this item, prevent oversending, allow oversending, all that thing. But this oversending does not work as well, depending on what you use. Sometimes 
with drawers it does send items still and then the drawer is full and then it's backlogged so that does not always work as it should so now let's say one of these machines need water now we need to give it where's the water fluid duct sorry so let's say that machine needs water so now we have power line this need this one needs items to be piped in at the top and now we have three lines to give, give these two machines what they need power items and liquid for this one so this is where i believe ender io makes this a lot easier and the usb fluids here's the fluids see there's a power line coming down here's a liquid line and one of these lines this is a fluid line you can see at the tool tip at the top fluid conduit this is item conduit and this is the power energy conduit so all is in one so it's nice and neat it's much more compact so that's the reason why i pushed for ender io this is still an awesome mod don't get me wrong it's very nice and it can, it has a lot of powerful items in it it can go up to magnet magmatic dynamo it has a lot of different type of dynamos for power generation there's even one for fuel so you can burn fuel where you have the different types of generators same in ender io but i just prefer in ender io it feels for me their filtering system is better this one's for the filters is actually cheaper than Ender iOS. As I said, Ender iOS is not really early game, but it can be if you push, you can. But this is much more early game. You can configure items left and right, right and left, and you can push and pull on whichever side you want. And just to cover my bases, I just want to show you the same with here, even though my system is different, you can also say push, pull, disable or none at all so it does exactly the same thing all four all six sides sorry so it's exactly the same so what's, what is nice is you can already see what cables and so on which you don't see with this and you have to have three faces if you want different things going into one machine so that was it for this episode hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you enjoyed the first draw episode as well oh wow this episode is going on too long this mini episode but still it's mini in, <laughs> um, in in relation to my normal episodes but let me know what you guys would want to see in the next one i'm thinking maybe inter io but that can be a bit of an extensive one or any other mod you'd like to see maybe britannia just some of the mechanics going over it or whatever but let me know down in the comments guys thank you for watching this please give me a like subscribe and hope to see you in the next mini cheers